doubt the first move you'll want to learn is the back roll. It doesn't have to be a scary trick as you don't have to approach full speed. I've spent a lot of time coaching this trick and more than anything, it's all about commitment. The back roll is the easiest roll to learn because the rotation is heavily connected to the edging. You might have already tried a few and if you find you're getting stuck halfway round like this, then we'll need to wind things back a bit. I think it's really important to understand what's happening without the board. Find somewhere safe in the shallows and practice rotating underneath the kite. Keep the kite steady at 12 and try not to apply too much pressure to the bar which should stay just in front of your face. Embrace the feeling of flying with the lines crossed then practice spinning the bar back around. Now you're ready. Are you a thrasher? going into the roll super aggressively with varied results? Or perhaps you're struggling to complete the rotation which is most likely down to your edging technique. Taking off with a flat board denies us that decent pop we need to complete the back roll rotation. As I'm always saying, edging is essential and especially for this trick. Lean back on the hillside rail and direct the board upwind. It's all in the heel of the back foot. Look at the difference of the angle of my board in these two clips. This is what I'm talking about. Try to think of it as a nice progressive curve into the wind. Let's take a look at some more common problems like the temptation to pull on the back hand. It can lead to bringing the kite back over 12, as you can see here where the result was no exit speed. Or it can lead to more severe crashes, like this one. Ouch! I took a big caner right there, as I put way too much weight on the back hand, causing a big kite loop. Moving your hands to the centre of the bar is the best way to prevent unwanted kite movements. But if you still can't help pulling the back hand, try releasing it just after takeoff. This technique also prepares you for grabbing the board, but that's not on the agenda today, one step at a time. It's worth mentioning that if the bar is heavily sheeted out, it will make the back roll harder. We do need a slight amount of lift from the kite, but where should it be? When performing the back roll, keep your kite close to 12, but still aim slightly in the direction of travel. This way you can engage a small amount of lift for the roll and still ride out with power from the kite. In this next example, the kite is positioned much lower in the window. It makes it much harder to complete the rotation and in most cases ends up with a nosedive. Let's begin to wrap this up now and I feel it's time to share my biggest secret to the perfect back roll. Board first, head second. You can see here my head has started the rotation before my board has left the water. The result is a nose heavy landing. Now watch the difference. Board first, head second. If there was one thing you must repeat in your head when approaching this trick, then this is it. Let the momentum created by your board do the work. This allows you greater control of the back roll as by turning your head second, you decide when it's time to catch up with the board. Well done for nailing one of the first major tricks in your kiteboarding journey. Now it's time to master the move. Start a new session on your Woo, making sure it's in the big air mode. Now try to land three back rolls all over 2.5 metres.